what? Vitamin authentication. Look, I have one right here. Well, here, I'll let you hold it. Mm. Would you like to hold it? I'll hold it. Okay. <laughs> so, this... You guys see it? This pill has a small chip inside of it with a switch. It also has what amounts to an inside-out potato battery. When really you small. swallow it, the acids in your stomach serve as the electrolyte. That's what they do. And they power it up, and the switch goes on and off. And it creates an 18-bit ECG-like signal in your body, and essentially your entire body becomes your authentication token. Yes, this is true. Okay? Okay, but... Okay, so wait. But, but, so it's, uh, it's really true. So what this means is that that becomes my first superpower. I really want this superpower. It means that my arms are like wires, my hands are like alligator clips when I touch my phone, my computer, my door, my car, I'm authenticated in. First superpower, like I want that. So, so we're not shipping that right away. Yeah, no, <laughs> we're not shipping that right but, away. But it but sounds is it, like- is it, This is FDA cleared? So here's the thing, this, this is not science fiction. This pill was actually made by a company called Proteus. and they've developed it for medical applications. That pill has been CE stamped and cleared by the FDA. You can take 30 of those per day for the rest of your life. And then what happens? Does your heart Nothing. beat change? Does your... We can just tell that you've you... taken the pill. I mean, the medical, appli yeah. the medical application... Does Google is... now know everything I do and everywhere I go? Because <laughs> no. let's face it, Here, we, we like just... you guys, but you're from Google. Just... Hey guys, it's KJ from the Scariest Movie Ever channel on YouTube. I recently saw an interesting interview with Elon Musk. And throughout this interview, he's talking a lot about a subject or a trend I've seen on the uprise over the last few years. And this has to do with the discussion of microchipping the population. I also believe that's why we've been seeing an influx of other stories out there over the last few years that have to do with our society, our world, going cashless, digital currency. This beast system, as I call it, is manifesting really quickly. We're already in it, but we haven't seen the end game yet. And I believe a major part of this end game has to do with microchipping the population of the Earth. This also falls in line with prophecy. We really are in the verge of a one-world order, a one-world system, a one-world government a one-world leader, and a one-world religion. In my last video, I mentioned how I believe the Antichrist spirit is really on the move right now. And in that particular instance, I was talking about the fires in Paris. And not only those fires, but other church fires that have been being set for a while now as well. So before we get to the portion of this video that has to do with Elon Musk, I want to focus a little bit on the Antichrist spirit and how it's been moving, especially over this last few weeks. Take a look, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So since the fire at the Notre Dame Cathedral in France, a lot has come out. And at this point, I firmly believe that all of this was a message. When we look into these kind of synchronicities, or these kinds of trends, or even the language of symbols, it's important to use our spiritual eyes. So the whole key is to watch this portion right here of I Pet Goat 2. This is some of the animation. You see this Jesus figure's crown of thorns disappear, and at the very same time, you see a representation of the Notre Dame Cathedral collapsing just over his shoulder. Now, check this out. The cathedral actually drops the same way in real life that it did in this video that was made, I don't know, five or six years ago? This is not an accident. So we have the spires falling perfectly right in real life and also in this animation this occult animation we had his crown of thorns disappearing in the animation and we have this story right here the crown of thorns purportedly worn by jesus on the cross was among precious artifacts saved from the notre dame inferno by firefighters and again i don't see this as any kind of an accident I did my own decode on all of I Pet Goat 2 uh, a few years ago. I think I've done a few of them up to now. But even in my original breakdown of this occult animation, I see this character here as more of an Antichrist figure and not Jesus Christ the Savior. 
Moments before we see the cathedral in the background collapsing, you see this Antichrist or Jesus type figure, false Jesus type figure, coming out of a birthing canal. And it's that same canal that this collapsing church is in front of. Let me show you something else real quick. So right around the same time of the Notre Dame event, we had this story here, Fire Extinguished in Crypt of Cathedral of St. John the Divine. I've covered the pillars at St. John's Cathedral in New York City many times throughout the years, and uh, this right here, once again, is a good reason why. This connects to all the fires. Right here on the pillars, you basically see the end of the world. You can look this up for yourself if you're interested. Again, many of you have seen me do breakdowns on these pillars, but most importantly, here's one right here. Where amidst all of this chaos and destruction, we have something or somebody coming out of a birthing canal, right? You see the little lamb underneath there. And I believe this is essentially the same thing we saw in Ipet Goat 2 with the false Christ type figure and the end of the church age and the birthing canal. So even here on St. John's Pillars, we have the same idea of the birthing of the Antichrist or the arrival of the Antichrist. Now let's take a look at this other trend that's very important to understand, I believe. In the video I did about uh, the Paris Cathedral collapsing, I had mentioned that this is just the beginning. Again, this is the Antichrist spirit on the move, and now they're going after the churches. I mean, more importantly, they're going after us. They're going after believers, after followers of Christ. But we're seeing it manifest in the physical right now with these attacks on churches. So, of course, we had the one in Paris, and now look at all these that have followed since. They wanted to bring it down. And this one's from April 25th, 2019. April 27th, a separate event. This story here from April 25th. Man storms German church. As I said, this is a spirit, I believe. This is the Antichrist spirit. You see this story here. This just happened about a week ago. Man with gas cans in St. Patrick's Cathedral plan to burn it down. Some of you may have missed this story, but yet another one, another French church burns on Easter Sunday. Here's another one, April 23rd, church destroyed by fire on Bay Verte Peninsula. April 24th, man storms into Tongan church in Auckland and starts yelling. Here's a little bit from the article. It says, she said she felt the man's clothing brush past her, then opened her eyes to see the man walking up to the elders at the front and yelling, Jesus, Jesus, and pointing to the cross on the wall. Reaching the reverend and others at the front, the man began kissing their heads and trying to shake their hands, leaving parishioners, including the reverend, in shock. April 25th, crime report, man arrested for burglarizing Lion Park Church. We also have more strange behaviors surrounding churches. This is 26th April from Melbourne, Australia. Dramatic moment, cops swarm a Melbourne church before two men arrested. This one's from April 24th, Lexington Police Looking for Those Who Vandalized Church Cemetery. April 23rd, Catholic Church Vandalized in Northern Ireland. Here's an image I wanted to share with you of one of these people attacking the churches. They caught this back on March 16th. But when I tell you it's a spirit that's doing this, it's an antichrist spirit, I see that even more with this kind of imagery. Here's some character dressed up in all black, and it looks like he's got some kind of war paint on or makeup. And he's attacking these churches. So here's a story I found that was really interesting as well, because this happened a few weeks before the Notre Dame event. Shattered statues and satanic symbols mark rise in attacks of French church. This falls right in line with the kind of work I've been doing for many years and showing how there's a rise in Satanism. At this point now, it's basically become mainstream. But even in this article, they talk about many of the statues in these churches are having their heads taken off, along with other forms of destruction and fires and whatnot. There's also lots of symbolism, uh, specifically around the statues that a lot of these churches are being beheaded. This right here is from the 18th of April. Here's another story about a beheaded statue, and this is from April 5th, 2019, just a few weeks ago. And all of this does connect back to Notre Dame. You may remember this story. Some of you may have missed this. Why were the 12 apostles and four evangelist statues really beheaded? 
As I stated earlier, and in my belief system, this is a spiritual language, and all of this ties into the end times. We know in the Bible that in the end times there will be people that have their heads removed because they refuse to accept the mark, or they refuse to sign off on this beast system. I'm guessing that most of you haven't heard all of those stories about these various churches being attacked and destroyed. So I find this story very interesting. This is from April 18th. Once again, just a few weeks ago, U.S. church membership hits all-time low, and that's a Gallup poll. So as we see all this chaos, as we see all this destruction taking place, centered around the churches all around the world, we also have church membership hitting an all-time low. I believe these are signs of the end of the age, the end of the church age. Entering into the age of Aquarius, or the last age of man, the fully realized beast system. So as you've noticed, just from the stories I showed you, this is all from the past week or so, so there is obviously an increase on this kind of activity. And as I mentioned earlier, we're moving quicker towards this fully realized beast system or one world order system. And we get this news right here from February 3rd, 2019, is construction of a new Tower of Babel in Israel preparation for the Third Temple. This beast system and all of its minions, all the secret societies that run it, they love their symbolism. Here's a side by side of the old school Tower of Babel and then this new creation they're wanting to achieve. And this is from the article, the new tower will take its place next to the iconic circle, square, <laughs> and triangle towers. And this right here is one of the most interesting pieces of information from this article about the new towers they're going to build, topping out at 91 stories and reaching 1,150 feet toward the heavens. It is estimated that the spiral tower will take six years to complete at an estimated cost of $666 million. So I started this video with the now infamous footage of Regina Dugan, who's from DARPA and also had been a Google CEO. And in that video, of course, she's talking about how cool it's going to be when people start accepting these tattoos that you can put on your skin and it'll connect you to the internet. So as far as I'm concerned, that was a real soft sell on ultimately what they're really wanting to do. And they are truly wanting to connect us, human beings, to artificial intelligence and to the internet. Essentially tinkering with God's own creation in that sense. So here's the story. Elon Musk claims Neuralink technology that will connect the human brain with computers is coming soon. Elon Musk believes humans must link up with machines in order to fight the inevitable onslaught of artificial intelligence. Now, to me, that's a ridiculous sentence. But once again, how are they going to sell this kind of a thing to the public? How are they going to get people to sign on to getting connected to artificial intelligence and the Internet? In a recent tweet, the SpaceX and Tesla CEO said technology from his latest company, Neuralink, will be coming soon. Neuralink has previously teased a product that would effectively connect human brains to computers using, that's right, a tiny implanted chip. So the article gets creepier. In November last year, Musk told Axios that the technology would involve an electrode to neutron interface at a micro level. More specifically, it would be a chip and a bunch of tiny wires that's implanted surgically into your skull. The long-term aspiration with Neuralink would be to achieve a symbiosis with artificial intelligence and to achieve a sort of democratization of intelligence such that it's not monopolistically held in purely digital form by governments and large corporations. But most importantly, at least for me, I found this last sentence very interesting as well. I believe this can be done. It's probably on the order of a decade. Musk has long been a critic of artificial intelligence, warning that it should fall into the wrong hands or become too smart. It could wreak havoc on the world. He launched San Francisco-based Neuralink in 2016 to develop implantable brain-computer interfaces that could upload and download thoughts. It's interesting that on one hand he's talking about how dangerous artificial intelligence could be, but on the other hand he's wanting to hook us up into it. This right here is from his website, Neuralink.com. You can check this out for yourselves. There's actually a list underneath this right here of different jobs that uh, they're trying to get filled, the positions. So it says here, Neuralink is developing ultra-high bandwidth brain-machine interfaces to connect humans and computers. 
What could go wrong, right? We are looking for exceptional engineers and scientists, etc., etc. None of that really matters. But the point is that this is all very real. So you can look this up for yourself. And they're currently hiring uh, different people at Neuralink to essentially connect human beings and computers. And there's been a slow buildup to this connecting humans and computers. They've been doing this kind of a thing for quite a while. Here's a story from 2012. New pill with ingestible microchip monitors you from the inside. Here's a story from Digital Trends, came out in 2016. Touch in VR goes in a predictable direction. VR sex suit sells out in hours. I was mentioning earlier in the video how I've seen stories over the last few years talking about getting rid of cash, making everything digital. Here's a story right here from 2016, inside the secret meeting where Wall Street tested digital cash. And all of this is important, once again, because we see the trend. We see where it's moving. Here's another story from 2016. Some of you may not remember this, but you'll remember the picture when I show you. It says it looks like he's planning to steal our brains. Picture of Zuckerberg from Facebook and 5,000 devoted, quote, zombies wearing virtual reality headsets triggers online ridicule and fear. And all this talk about the human brain and connecting with computers and everything else reminds me of this really creepy story that just came out recently. FDA approves new treatment for ADHD using electrical shocks to the forehead. So if you didn't know, this is essentially shock treatment. Shock treatment. Look how they're trying to sell it. There's an exciting breakthrough for the treatment of ADHD, and it doesn't involve drugs. Most importantly, check this out. The device called Monarch. <laughs> Monarch stimulates different nerves in a similar way that studies have shown stimulating nerves in the neck are effective for controlling epilepsy and depression. And most of us understand the connection between you know, messing with your mind and Monarch. The Monarch Project is real. It's a mind control program developed by the CIA under Project MKUltra. So here's Elon Musk, and he's going to create a system that can plug human brains into computers, essentially, by using a microchip. So he wants to microchip the population. And he said that this goal will most likely be met within the next 10 years. Well, considering the time we're in right now, 2019, somewhere around the middle, Close to 2020, isn't it interesting that in just 10 years' time, we'll be at the 2030 Agenda? Pope Francis urges Christians to back Agenda 2030. Pope Francis has published a papal document urging Christians to adopt climate change and environmental propaganda as a core part of their faith. So if you didn't know, 2030 really is the end game. It's all about the New World Order, all about massive control over the entire planet in the hands of just a few. And interestingly, it falls into that timeline of when perhaps uh, the microchip may be ready for humanity within 10 years. Whether these line up or not, it is interesting that they're on the same trajectory. And we know that the end game will be the same, once again a one world system with an antichrist at the head. Now this is very interesting as well, Pope Francis to join Google's Eric Schmidt in rare tech industry meeting. So I bet you're wondering what they talked about. Well, if you didn't know, The New Digital Age is a book by Eric Schmidt and Jared Cohen. Now you should look into this because essentially this is part of the future that they're planning for all of us. And it's interesting that they had time with the Pope, again, right, considering where we're moving. And what is this book about? This book is all about, what do you think? connecting humanity to computers. So by now you have to see the way all this is connected and it's all forming together for the same end game. So this right here is actually from the United Nations document concerning Agenda 2030. And that's right, the United Nations is involved with this as well. And there's 17 goals to this Agenda 2030. I found this over at naturalnews.com. I, I think it's a fantastic breakdown. So let's take a look here that goal number one is to end poverty in all of its forms, but the translation is they want to put everyone on government welfare, food stamps, housing subsidies, and handouts to make them obedient slaves to global government, never allowing people upward mobility to help themselves, instead 
teach mass victimization and obedience to a government that provides monthly allowance money for basic essentials like food and medicine, and then label it ending poverty. Goal number two, end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition, and promote sustainable agriculture. Translation. Invade the entire planet with GMOs and Monsanto's patented seeds while increasing the use of deadly herbicides under the false claim of increased output of food crops. Engineer genetically modified plants to boost specific vitamin chemicals while having no idea of the long-term consequences of genetic pollution across species genetic experiments carried out openly in a fragile ecosystem. Goal number three, ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Translation, mandate 100 plus vaccines for all children and adults at gunpoint threatening parents with arrest and imprisonment if they refuse to cooperate. Push heavy medication use on children and teens while rolling out quote screening programs. Call mass medication quote prevention programs and claim they improve the health of all citizens. Goal number four, to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Translation, push a false history and a dumbed down education under quote common core education standards that produce obedient workers rather than independent thinkers. Never let people learn real history or else they might realize they don't want to repeat it. Goal number five, to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Translation, Criminalize Christianity, marginalize heterosexuality, demonize males, and promote the LGBT agenda everywhere. The real goal is never equality, but rather the marginalization and shaming of anyone who expresses any male characteristics whatsoever. The ultimate goal is to feminize society, creating widespread acceptance of gentle obedience, along with the self-weakening ideas of communal property and sharing everything because only male energy has the strength to rise up against oppression and fight for human rights. The suppression of male energy is key to keeping the population in a state of eternal acquiescence. Goal number six, to ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Translation, allow powerful corporations to seize control of the world's water supplies and charge monopoly prices to, quote, build new water delivery infrastructure that, quote, ensures availability. Goal number seven, to ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Translation, penalize coal, gas, and oil while pushing doomed to fail green energy subsidies to brain-dead startups headed by friends of the White House who all go bankrupt in five years or less. Goal number eight, promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment, and decent work for all. Translation, regulate small business out of existence with government-mandated minimum wages that bankrupt entire sectors of the economy. Force employers to meet hiring quotas of LGBT workers while mandating wage tiers under a centrally planned work economy dictated by the government. Destroy free market economics and deny permits and licenses to those companies that don't obey government dictates. Goal number nine, build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization, and foster innovation. Translation, put nations into extreme debt with the World Bank spending debt money to hire corrupt American corporations to build large-scale infrastructure projects that trap developing nations in an endless spiral of debt. See the book Confessions of an Economic Hitman by John Perkins to understand the details of how this scheme has been repeated countless times over the last several decades. Goal number 10, to reduce inequality within and among countries. Translation, punish the rich, the entrepreneurs, and the innovators, confiscating nearly all gains by those who choose to work and excel. Redistribute the confiscated wealth to the masses of non-working human parasites that feed off a productive economy while contributing nothing to it, all while screaming about equality. Goal number 11, make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Translation, ban all gun ownership by private citizens, concentrating guns into the hands of obedient government enforcers who rule over an unarmed, enslaved class of impoverished workers. Criminalize living in most rural areas by instituting Hunger Games-style, quote, protected areas, which the government will claim are owned by, quote, the people, even though no people are allowed to live there. Force all humans into densely packed, tightly controlled cities where they are under 24-7 surveillance and subject to easy manipulation by the government. 
Goal number 12, ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. Translation, begin levying punitive... <clears throat> Translation, begin levying punitive taxes on the consumption of fossil fuels and electricity, forcing people to live under conditions of worsening standards of living that increasingly resemble third world conditions. Use social influence campaigns in TV, movies, and social media to shame people who use gasoline, water, or electricity, establishing a social construct of ninnies and tattlers who rat out their neighbors in exchange for food credit rewards. Goal number 13, take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. Translation, set energy consumption quotas on each human being and start punishing or even criminalizing, quote, lifestyle decisions that exceed energy use limits set by governments. Institute total surveillance of individuals in order to track and calculate their energy consumption. Penalize private vehicle ownership and force the masses onto public transit, where TSA grunts and facial recognition cameras can monitor and record the movement of every person in society, just like a scene ripped right out of the film Minority Report. Number 14. Conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. Translation, ban most ocean fishing, plunging the food supply into an extreme shortage and causing runaway food price inflation that puts even more people into economic desperation. Criminalize the operation of private fishing vessels and place all ocean fishing operations under the control of government central planning. Only allow favored corporations to conduct ocean fishing operations. Number 15, protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, sustainably managed forests, and combat desertification and halt on reverse land degradation and halt biodiversity loss. Translation, roll out Agenda 21 and force humans off the land and into controlled cities. Criminalize private land ownership including ranches and agricultural tracts. Tightly control all agriculture through a corporate corrupted government bureaucracy whose policies are determined almost entirely by Monsanto while being rubber stamped by the USDA. Ban wood stoves, rainwater collection, and home gardening in order to criminalize self-reliance and force total dependence on the government. Number 16. Promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. Translation. Grant legal immunity to illegal aliens and protected minority groups which will be free to engage in any illegal activity including openly calling for the mass murder of police officers because they are the new protected class in society. Inclusive institutions means granting favorable tax structures and government grants to corporations that hire LGBT workers or whatever groups are currently in favor with the central planners in the government at that time. Use the IRS and other federal agencies to selectively punish unfavorable groups with punitive audits and regulatory harassment all while ignoring the criminal activities of favored corporations that are friends of the political elite. And the last goal, number 17, to strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. Translation, enact global trade mandates that override national laws while granting unrestricted imperialism powers to companies like Monsanto, Dow Chemical, R.J. Reynolds, Pass global trade pacts that bypass a nation's lawmakers and override intellectual property laws to make sure the world's most powerful corporations maintain total monopolies over drugs, seeds, chemicals, and technology. Nullify national laws and demand total global obedience to trade agreements authored by powerful corporations and rubber stamped by the United Nations. So 2030 is the goal, and 2030 seems to be the end game. As the UN document says, we commit ourselves to working tirelessly for the full implementation of this agenda by 2030. If you read the full document and can read beyond the fluffery and public relations phrases, you'll quickly realize that this UN agenda is going to be forced upon all of the citizens of the world through the invocation of government coercion. Nowhere does this document state that the rights of the individual will be protected nor does it even acknowledge the existence of human rights granted to individuals by the Creator. Even the so-called Universal Declaration of Human Rights utterly denies individuals the right to self-defense, the right to medical choice, and the right to parental control over their own children. The UN is planning nothing less than a global government tyranny, a new world order, that enslaves all of humanity while calling the scheme Sustainable Development and Equality. 
So I realized there was a lot more to this video than just Elon Musk's role. But Elon Musk's role in all of this is huge. This man is a real celebrity and he's known all around the world. And people seem to like him. And this video is not about that. It's not about his personality or any of that kind of stuff. I don't care about all that. What I do care about is that he is openly talking about microchipping humanity. And his agenda lines up perfectly with another agenda that hopes to see an end game of a new world order. And the Bible tells us exactly what this is going to look like. So isn't it interesting that we're living in a time right now where we're seeing all of these things converge at the same time? So I'll leave you with that. As always, thanks so much for watching my video. Don't live in fear of these things, but it's very important for us to stay aware and watch. So until next time, take care of yourselves out there, okay? And I'll talk to you a little later.